Hello and welcome to chapter 20 of this Flutter course. In this chapter, which is going to be a very short one, I think it's going to be the shortest chapter of all the chapters we've done so far, we're going to do some cleanup. Now, you can see that, uh, I mean, I'll show you what state we left our code in in the previous chapter. This is what we've done. So I'm going to bring up the project uh, files up here. You will see that um, the state that we left our project in was if we go to our main Dart, we had some uh, routes defined. And I'm going to do it like this so you'll see it better. We had some routes defined. And, um, and one was called a login, which the register view actually uses to send the user to the login view if the user already had a um, if the user had already registered and we don't actually have to talk uh, about that without showing it so let's go here let's go here in the register view so if the user ends up in the registry and they already have a username and uh, their email and password set up then they can click on this or tap on this button that says already registered login here and that happens in our um, register view here navigator of push name and then goes to the login route which is defined in main dart and the, kind of the same thing happens in the login view here so if the user doesn't have um their uh, if the user hasn't registered for our, our service then they can actually tap on not registered yet register here button okay and that's the register route and the third route that we have is the notes route which allows us to send the user from the login screen to the main UI of the application, which we just call at the moment notes view, which right now resides inside main Dart. And I'll just have a look at my code here and just to ensure that that is what I had intended. Yeah, so we haven't yet uh, refactored notes view and we haven't yet put it into its own file. Okay, so let's talk about hard coding now. If you're not a programmer, like if you don't have a software development background, you probably don't know what hard coding is. But I'll I'll kind of give you the um, I'll give you example maybe in different worlds that may also be relevant in, for a programmer. Let's say you're working in Figma and you're working with a design, so you have a list of items to display on the screen, and you create these list designs like you have a little cell that should be displayed inside a view then you go and copy paste this in 10 different places and then you talk to the team about the design that you've created and then they say oh you'd be really great if this label was a little bit bigger then what you'd have to do is to go into every place that you've copy pasted that um cell and you have to change the label a better way of doing that in figma if you're a designer would be to create a, a component and then create instances of that design component in various uh, pages of your figma design so if so you need to update something then you need to just update it in one place so even if you're not coming from a design background and you're working, for instance, as a project a product owner or a project manager, you may be working with some like um, Excel sheets and you're creating maybe um, some um, a graphs. Now, if you create a graph from a data set, uh, you probably want to reuse that graph in other places. So if someone says, OK, can I get like all the graphs available in the project, then you don't go and create the same graph over and over again. You kind of want to refer to the same sheet in your uh, Google Sheets or your Excel sheet. So the concept is the same. You don't want to repeat yourself. And that's what the mistake that we've done at the moment in our source code in that we have our routes defined in one place. However, we're everywhere we're going to use these routes, we're writing their names again. And this is one thing that most programmers do not like um, when you become more of a seasoned, like a senior developer then you try to avoid these uh, things because if we now go to our uh, main dart file and change this login to just slash login then we have to search everywhere in our project for a name route called slash login slash as it was before and change that to this new form and that's not a good idea that's hard coding and that is why developers don't like it and i suggest that you don't like it either <laughs> So uh, what we're going to do in this chapter very quickly, hopefully we can get done with it soon, 
uh, be done with it soon. We're going to create a new file in our project. It's the first file of its kind that we're creating where we're going to put our constants. Okay, so constants, as you know from where we talked about Dart, are values that don't change during the compile time and they don't change during the runtime either. So these are our route names because they're always constant. There, no one is going in there and changing them. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. As the caption says here, let's go create a file under lib under folder called constants and then routes. And as I showed you before, you don't have to create the intermediate directories in this case constants before you create the route start file. What you'll need to do is just right click on lib where you want to create the constants and then the lib, um, sorry, the constants folder and then um, route start file. Just right click here, say new file, then say constants um, if I can spell it. Um, and then say uh, routes start. <clears throat> and that will create the constants folder, intermediate folder for you. Okay. So what we need now is to define, as the caption says here, we need to define three routes, one for the login route, one for register, and the other one for the notes route. So let's just say const login route. And we just say that's equal to login slash. I'm going to copy paste this. And I'm just going to in this second one, just say this is a register route as the caption suggests, and then the notes route. Okay. And in here, I'm going to say register. And in here, you should say also notes. Okay, so now we've defined these three um, routes. But what we need to do now, we've defined them, but this is not enough. What we need to do is to actually go and use them. So let's go back to our main Dart file. And in here, instead of using login, we need to use a login route, right? And you can see now Visual Studio Code is smart enough to understand that this is a symbol that we've defined in a file here. But this symbol right now isn't available in the current context because we haven't imported that constant uh, routes uh, file. So if I just allow Visual Studio Code to auto import that, you can see all of a sudden the symbol becomes a valid symbol in my current context. And if I go up here, then I should be able to see that Visual Studio Code has imported this file for me. But if you're if you're working with Vim or if you're working with Android Studio and you're not given the opportunity to auto import, you can always go to this symbol and just say uh, command dot or control dot, depending on your operating system, and just say import that library. And even if you're editor isn't smart enough to do importing in this way, you can import it yourself. So you can just say um, import package, then the name of the application, which is my notes, and then you'd say constants slash routes dot dart. So there you have three ways of solving the same problem. I usually do auto import, so I don't have to type all of that. Um, and I'm not going to explain this more than in the upcoming chapter. So you have all the tools necessary in order to be able to fix a problem like this, okay? So in here, I'm going to use register route. And since uh, routes dart is now imported here, uh, here, then I'm not going to have a problem and I don't have to auto import anything, okay? And for notes, I'm going to say notes route. So that's great. Now we've defined them in our main function. However, we still have a few places where we're doing routing and we're hard coding those routes. So let's fix first our notes view, which is the main UI of the application. So if I type here pixeltab at gmail.com uh, like that, and then I say um, login, and we're getting some, oh, foo bar baz. Like that. In here, when we do log out, that's where we're sending the user to the login route. So let's change that as well to say login route. Okay, so that's one place. Uh, I'm gonna then say log out here, Oof. log out. So that's fixed now. The other place we have to fix is in the login view, as you can see here where we press the not registered yet register here button. So let's go to the login view. In our views, in login view, I'm going to get rid of the explorer there. In the in this button, not registered yet, uh, let's see where it is. Um, here. 
you see we're sending the user to the register route. So I'm going to send them instead to register route. And you can see we just see the code sm smart enough again to do auto import. So I'm going to take that option. And also we have another route here, which sends you to notes where you uh, have successfully logged in. So let's just say notes route. Okay. So that's for our login view. Uh, and now the other place that we have to fix is in register view. So go to your project explorer and then go to register view and have a look at where we're doing this login button here. Okay. And um, let's then say instead of that, we're just going to say <clears throat> login routes. Okay. So if you now search for push name and remove until and then show the results, if you click through them, you shouldn't have any routes that is hard coded. Okay, so notes route, register route, and the login route. So now we fix this, and just remember, because we now have changed the main function here and we have some routes here, do you have to do hot restart in order to see your changes? But if everything's working according to the plan and that we didn't like to make any wrong choices in our route names in that we gave them the same name or anything, which we haven't, if everything's working like it did before, then you shouldn't see any changes in here. So if you enter your information like you did before, and I say foo bar baz, then I should be able to log in, should be able to log out, and I should be able to go to a register view or the login view. So it's working exactly as it did before. Okay. All right, great stuff. That was a quick chapter. As other chapters, since now we have made some changes and we've actually made the code better and we've tested to make sure everything works fine, it's time to commit our changes. As you can see, the previous chapter, we committed our changes as step four. And in this chapter, we're going to commit our changes as step five. And we're also going to, um, we're also going to tag it like we did before. And let me change the layout as well so you'll see the terminal a little bit better i'm gonna do it like this gonna make the terminal bigger even so you see it even better so let's go ahead and see what the status is i can see there are lots of changes as you can see here it says you've made changes you modified these existing files and now all of a sudden there's a new folder as well so what i like to do in these cases when there is a new folder I like to do git add all because this adds all the files and folders. So you could say git add all. And if you say git status now, you can see the new folder, including its content, is now added to the staging environment or the staging area. OK, now we've staged. So now let's commit. And we, say, we said that we are going to commit and tag as step five. So let's say step five. Um, and then git tag um, step five as well. Git push your changes and then git push the tags as well. All right, so if I say git tag now, we have five tags. And if I say git log, we have step five, four, three, two, and then the initial commit, which is pretty much step one. All right, so great stuff. Well done for going through this chapter so fast as well together with me. And what we need to do now is to get ready for the next chapter. And just to give you a little preview, what we're going to work on is to have a look at our error handling in specifically the login view. So if I make this a little bit smaller, so it's more digestible, you can see at the moment our error handling, the reason I put quotation marks around it is that it's not so much of an error handling, to be honest with you. What it is doing is just says, if an error of this type happens, then log this message to the console. A normal user sitting with their phone um, they don't have access to logs. They're not going to see any logs. So logs are very, very much useless for them. And what we're going to do in the next chapter is actually display meaningful information to the user using some alert views and uh, dialogues. So uh, grab your refreshments if you want to, and I'll see you in the next chapter.